Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist. Now, this is a really quick video because I'm supposed to be packing at the moment. But I saw a tweet today about some analysis of the Pfizer documents that was done by Dr. Naomi Wolf, who has a PhD in English literature, that supposedly showed there was a 44% incidence of miscarriages in the Pfizer vaccine trials. This is the tweet. It states, according to Dr. Naomi Wolf, who runs a crowdsourced project to analyse 300,000 Pfizer documents released by an FOIA request, 44% of pregnant women who participated in the drug makers COVID-19 vaccine trial lost their babies, followed by a headline saying, massacre, nearly half of pregnant women in Pfizer trial miscarried. So where did this 44% number come from? Well, she divided 22 by 50. Now, the maths is correct. 22 divided by 50 does, in fact, give you 44%. The only problem is 22 isn't the number of miscarriages and 50 isn't the number of pregnancies. So the maths is right, but the numbers are wrong. So where did she go wrong? The data comes from this document here, which lists all the adverse events which occurred during the Pfizer trial in both people who were originally given the vaccine in the initial randomised trial, as well as those who received it later after the unblinding occurred. Now, it firstly lists all the adverse events that occurred in this table here. It then lists all the serious adverse events in this table. What Dr. Wolf hasn't realised is that the events listed in the Serious Adverse Events table have already been listed in the Adverse Events table because the Serious Adverse Events are a subset of all adverse events. So what she's done is counted 11 miscarriages in the Adverse Events table and then recounted those same adverse events in the Serious Adverse Events table. And it's easy to confirm that this has been done because everyone has a unique number and you can check that it's the same unique number in both tables. So we have 11 miscarriages and not 22. But what about the number of pregnancies that occurred? Now, the number 50 comes from this table here. And the table does, in fact, contain 50 entries. But this is not the total number of pregnancies that occurred during the trial. We know this for two reasons. Firstly, if we look for the people that miscarried in this table, we see that only three of them are included. One on this page and two on this page. So obviously not everyone who was pregnant is included in this table. And in fact, if we divide the number of miscarriages of people who are actually in the pregnancy table by the number of pregnancies in the table, we get 6%, which is less than typical miscarriage rates for pregnancies, which are between 10 and 20%. Secondly, the table heading is listing of subjects reporting pregnancy after dose one. So obviously those who inadvertently got pregnant before dose one aren't included in the table. They are likely in another table in one of the other release documents, but I have no idea which document. And alas, I don't have time to try and find it at the moment because I'm supposed to be packing. At this stage, there is no question that mRNA vaccines are safe to take in pregnancy. A large number of studies have confirmed it. I won't show you all of them, but I will just very quickly show you one. This is a systematic review of 23 studies, which included 117,552 COVID-19 vaccinated pregnant people. 
Not only did it find no evidence of a higher risk of miscarriage or other adverse events amongst vaccinated people, those who were vaccinated were actually less likely to have stillbirths. So the latest claims are just more anti-vax nonsense from someone who doesn't understand the document she is reading. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on this video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.